How do transaction fees work on the WAX blockchain? What are CPU, Net, and RAM, and how do you stake your WAX tokens? I'm going to be covering all of these things in today's video, and for those of you who prefer written guides instead of videos, I've generously compiled all of this information into an article that I've posted on Leo Finance, which I will link in the description below. Before I get into the topic of the video, I do need to let you guys know that I am not a financial advisor and that all of the content on this channel is for entertainment purposes only. Also, if you like straightforward information about different crypto projects without all of the pumping and dumping that you see on other channels, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. So transaction fees on WAX work a bit differently than what you might be used to on blockchains like Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. You use the blockchain's native token in order to pay transaction costs, also known as gas fees. On the WAX blockchain, different types of transaction require different resources to cover the transaction fee. There are three different resources on WAX and your transaction will require one or more of these three resources Depending on the type of transaction that you're trying to make, these three resources are called RAM, CPU, and Net, and I'm about to explain how each one of those works. The first resource we're going to cover is RAM. RAM is what's referred to as a consumable resource. This means that when you spend RAM to cover a transaction fee, that RAM is permanently gone from your wallet. This is the same way that transaction fees work on most networks, like Ethereum, for example. When you use Ethereum, you spend the money to cover the transaction costs, and then you never get those transaction fees back. RAM is usually required for transactions such as listing NFTs for sale on websites like Atomic Hub or Nefty Blocks. Or if you're an NFT creator or a developer, you'll need RAM to create new NFT templates as well as minting NFTs. And as a developer, you'll also need RAM for your smart contracts to execute. This includes things like allowing buyers to mint NFTs from your drop. You can buy RAM by going to wax.blocks.io logging in with your wax wallet and going to the wallet tab from there you would select buy sell ram from the list on the left enter the amount of ram you'd like to buy and make sure you enter your own wallet as the receiver unless you're buying the ram for somebody else if you are not a developer or an nft creator five or ten wax worth of ram is more than enough to get started with you can always buy more later if and when you run out if you are a developer or an nft creator you will likely need 100 or more wax worth of RAM to launch your project, depending on how big your project is. The next resource that we're going to cover is CPU. CPU is what's referred to as a renewable resource. This means that when you use your CPU to cover a transaction, you actually get that CPU back after a few days. So you aren't actually spending any money when you use CPU. You're just tying up resources for a few days. For those of you who are Hive users, this is the same way that resource credits work on the Hive blockchain. CPU is based off of a three-day average. The average amount of CPU that you've used per day over the past three days determines how much CPU you currently have. There is also a supply and demand element to this. The more CPU demand that the WAX blockchain experiences at any given moment will determine the amount of CPU that you can use. For example, if you go to execute a transaction right now, it might go through and then maybe a minute later there might be an extreme amount of demand on the wax blockchain for cpu and then you'll be unable to complete that transaction and then maybe one minute later after that there's less demand for cpu on the wax blockchain and all of a sudden you'll be able to complete your transaction again cpu is the most commonly required resource for most transactions that you'll be performing this includes things like staking nfts claiming NFTs from a drop, even if the NFT is free, and creating and minting NFTs as well. You can get CPU by staking some of your WAX tokens. If you head on over to wax.blocks.io, log in and click the account tab, then select stake CPU slash net. Make sure your WAX address is in the receiver field and enter the amount of WAX you want to stake for CPU and submit the transaction. If you're just looking to buy and sell some NFTs, I recommend staking 50 to 100 WAX for CPU to start off with. If you're a developer or an NFT creator, you will likely need at least a few hundred WAX worth of CPU, and sometimes you may even need upwards of a thousand depending on the size of your project. The third and final resource that we need to cover is called Net. Net is also a renewable resource, which means that you get it back after you use it. This is also based off of a three-day average, just like CPU. Net is basically used to reserve you a spot on the WAX blockchain. So in situations where there might be extreme demand on the WAX blockchain, somebody with more net might be prioritized over somebody with less net. I've been using the WAX blockchain for over a year now, and I've never had more than 15 WAX 
staked for net. And in that time span, I've never come anywhere close to running out of net. So basically, if you just get five or 10 wax worth of net, you'll probably never have any problems. You can get net by using the exact same process as getting CPU, except you just select net from the menu instead of CPU. Staking wax tokens. So I've already discussed how to stake wax. You either stake wax for CPU or you stake it for net. But if that's all you've done so far, then there's one other step that you need to take if you want to receive staking rewards for your staked wax tokens. That step would be voting. I won't really go into detail here about how voting helps the network, but I will explain how to do it. All you need to do is go to wax.blocks.io, select the vote tab from the menu at the top, then select the proxies tab, select a proxy from the list, and submit the transaction by clicking the proxy to whoever you selected button. It's important that you vote for a proxy instead of a validator, so make sure you go to the proxy list because you won't receive staking rewards if you vote for a validator instead of a proxy. I believe you would need to vote for at least 16 different validators in order to receive staking rewards, whereas you just have to vote for one proxy to get staking rewards. So it's much easier to just vote for a proxy instead of a validator. Unstaking wax tokens. There's a 72 hour unstaking period when you choose to unstake your wax tokens. You can unstake by going to wax.blocks.io, select the wallet tab from the menu, select stake CPU slash net, click unstake, fill out the details and submit the transaction. 72 hours later, you'll receive your wax tokens back in your wallet. And you can also check the status of your unstaking transaction by going to the refund tab. Claiming staking rewards. To claim your staking rewards, Go to wax.blocks.io once again, select the wallet tab, then select claim GBM rewards from the list on the left. Click on the claim vote button and confirm the transaction and your staking rewards should appear in your wallet instantly. You should now have a good understanding of how transaction fees work on the Wax blockchain, what CPU, net, and RAM are, how to stake and unstake your Wax tokens, and how to vote so you can receive staking rewards. If you still have any questions, drop a comment below. And if you found this video helpful, Hit the like and subscribe button and click the notification bell. See you guys next time. Peace out. CPU is based off of a three-day average. The average amount of CPU that you've used. CPU, CPU is based off of a three-day average. The average amount of CPU that you've CPU is based off of a three-day average. The average amount of CPU that you've used. Let's try this one more time.